Um, I'll just start to introduce myself. Sure, so my name is Brooke Broad. I work for the city of Bellevue in the community development department. Hi, Brooke. And um, my title is community engagement lead. So that means my role is to kind of go out into the community and um, uh, engage them on various projects that the city is working on so we can get feedback. And so one of the projects that the city is currently working on is an update to its environmental stewardship plan and um, so uh, before we so before we kind of jump into it I'd love to hear from folks here in this room about like kind of what you I know you guys are earth part of earth ministry and I had reached out to your associate pastor I met with Laura last fall because I knew um, knowing that you guys were uh, part of earth ministry that you might be interested in the issue so I'd love to hear from folks about like why you care about the issue like why are you here early <laughs> for church um, and like what are some of the things maybe you're doing as part of this congregation? Well Len's wife is about to come. Mm -hmm. She's our big dear uh, <laughs> representative in That's this area. Right so. Okay. <laughs> she, she'll but be here. She'll I, uh, espouse her goals mm -hmm. as well. So. Yes. There she comes. Oh great. So any why 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 personally or as a congregation, why do you sort of care about this issue? We have grandchildren. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, if we don't take care of our Earth, our planet, uh, yeah. we don't have a lot of other choices. Yeah. We're not going to get to some other place. Mm -hmm. Well, we and have so much property to take care of that yeah. it's important. Yeah. And actually, it's a, it's a God-given uh, responsibility, I think, to take care of the world that we mm -hmm. live in, the animals and plants. Mm -hmm. The environment for me is all wrapped up in that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's like sort of in that word stewardship too, exactly. right? Yeah. You know that we are meant to be stewards um, of the earth for grandchildren, for future generations, for other life on the planet. I think um, that makes a lot of sense. So um, why the city is focusing on this, like obviously, um, or maybe not so obviously, cities play a really important role in climate change. Um, even I've learned quite a bit on this project. So globally, cities consume two-thirds of the world's energy, and cities create over 70% of the world's carbon emissions. 86% um, of the United States' population lives in what would be categorized an urban um, city or area. Um, there are 758 U.S. cities with populations over 50,000 people. That's definitely Bellevue is one of them. And over 120 million people live in cities. So that's all to say that, like, as a city, we could make a lot of difference in terms of the actions that we take in addressing climate and uh, protecting the environment. 120 million people live in a city. He had the United States. Yeah. And the United States. No, it still seems low. Seems still seems yeah. low. Well, I mean, what's the population in the United States? 300. Over something. 300. That's yeah. less than yeah. half. Yes. Um, you know, I'll have to go. That's a good thing yeah. I'll check. I mean, I was looking into this. I think, I mean, it may have been from a, like a, from the last census, too. So obviously, yeah. I mean, no, that, is, that, that doesn't seem right because well, yeah. then when you think about the percentage of pollution coming from the cities, from those few people, mm -hmm. that is. Yes. Um, and, you know, obviously doing this kind of work um, and really focusing on the environment has a number of benefits, right? So obviously healthy, livable communities. Um, there's a real economic benefit that I think people are focusing on and the opportunity to create new jobs and new industries around uh, environmental stewardship and resiliency. Um, healthy, beautiful, natural systems, I think, I mean, I think anybody who lives up in the Pacific Northwest, I think, is particularly, I think, moved by that. I think that's, you know, a lot of the reasons why people live here and what we enjoy about living here. Uh, more transportation options. Um, and, you know, I think for some people, right, like this really does have long-term cost savings by using renewable energies and other um, things that we can do. So why um, does the city of Bellevue have an environmental stewardship plan? What are the city's values around it? <coughs> so first of all, the city's committed to providing exceptional public service um, and environmental stewardship is part of that. The city really um, every year does a performance survey and one of the questions we ask is around that kind of um, 
community and how people feel that we are um, protecting the environment. Stewardship, both of kind of the natural resources and of beauty here. Um, being innovative, right? I think it's important for Bellevue to really, um, and, the ca and our city council has really directed the city staff to be innovative and bold on this issue of environmental stewardship um, and integrity, really doing the right thing. So a little bit about what's been going on in Bellevue. So we have seen a slight decrease um, by, uh, from 2011. Um, as our baseline of uh, greenhouse gas emissions, we've gone down 9%. That may not seem like a lot, but um, we've also had such enormous growth. So, um, you know, it's, it's, we want to be doing better, but I think the fact that we've been able to go down in our emissions despite the um, enormous amount of growth that we've had both in the city and the region is really important. To what do you attribute that? Um, well, I think we'll get into some of that in the progress um, stuff. I mean, certainly some of the choices that the city has been making and programs that the city is um, supporting and people's just general, I think, awareness. Um, so where Bellevue's emissions come from, so obviously the largest share is tr from transportation, right? This is like driving cars, trucks, goods, all of that. Um, the next biggest pot is just the energy use, the, whether people are paying for natural gas, the kind of electricity that we're paying for, so that comes, that's kind of divided between our commercial buildings, the office towers that are going up, and just residential, so the energy that we're using in our homes. Um, you know, Belle, Bellevue still does have, you know, although it's become such a tech hub, there is still some light industrial, so some of that manufacturing. Um, and then waste, so the recycling that we do, the things that we throw away, the construction debris, um, and then I can't remember what kind of falls into the other. I think there's a whole hodgepodge of other things that um, stuff comes from. And I saw some people um, taking photos. I'm also happy um, to, to Laura, I will send um, a copy of the PowerPoint so people can have the slides as well. I mean, you're welcome to take photos, but I wanna make sure, don't worry, I'll send those to you. So um, environmental stewardship is not a new thing for the city of Bellevue. Um, the initiative started in 2007. Um, around that time, um, Bellevue signed on to the Mayor's Climate Protection Agreement, so that is cities who are committing to meeting the Kyoto Protocols around reducing carbon. Um, and then in, I believe it was 2014, Bellevue joined the King County in the city's climate collaboration. So that's all of like Burien and Renton and a lot of the east side um, cities. And the, that's a group that's really trying to work regionally. I mean, I think it's hard to, for a lot of this work, right, you can't kind of do it in isolation. We really need to be working collaboratively. And um, the previous uh, uh, strategic plan went for five years, 2013 to 18. And there were a total of about 57 strategies. And the city made progress on about 96% of them. So I think, you know, we had a plan, we really worked towards it, and we started to achieve some of those goals. Um, and I will also happy, and we have some progress reports, so as I do a follow-up, I will make sure to send some great links and stuff if people want, I know sometimes people really want to dig into the details. So what our plan consists of is five focus areas, so our five focus areas in the plan are climate change, energy, uh, materials management and waste. Uh, mobility and land use, and then natural systems. So we have these five focus areas. Um, under each of them is kind of a large overarching goal, and I'll share some of those with you. And then we get into some really detailed targets, how much and by when we want to achieve certain things, and then the specific actions that we're gonna take to achieve those goals. So that's kind of how the plan is laid out. Um, some of the progress that we have made to date, so as I showed earlier, we've had a 9% um, reduction in community-wide greenhouse gas emissions. I should also say, I don't have it in there, the, the way the plan is structured is that there are goals, municipal goals, so these are goals that the city holds itself to, whether it's just having 
you know, like one of our things will be turning most of our fleet over into electric vehicles or using 100% renewable energy in all of the city-owned buildings or increasing recycling and composting by city staff. So there's specific municipal goals. I'm focusing mostly on our community goals, right? Um, energy, so one of the projects that was very successful was providing assistance to homeowners and other folks in installing solar arrays. So um, have done a lot of work on that. Um, you, are you gonna give us a little, like how many people actually participated in that sort of I thing? I don't or? have that, but okay. I can, I, you know what? I, I know some of the church members have. Oh, great, here. that's nice. Yeah, I, I don't know that the exact number and how that's divided, but that's a good note for me to add. You guys are sort of my first community presentation on, on this, so I'll learn. Um, materials, so about 41% of Bellevue, both kind of residential and commercially, are um, recycling or composting their waste. Um, and when you break it down, I mean, we have really high levels of participation. I think it's up in like the 67% for single family homes. I think we're really in this plan thinking about how we can help more commercial buildings and multifamily apartment buildings. Um, be stronger on their recycling and composting efforts will be a big focus of this next plan. Um, we have registered over 5,000 electric vehicles in the past five years, and um, the city has really um, put in a lot of effort to creating more um, public charging stations for those electric vehicles. I think obviously, um, another thing that I think we're seeing is as light rail is coming in, the city is really focused on um, doing what is called transit-oriented development of making sure that housing is really close to that transit so people can choose to live without a car or just drive less in general. So I think that's another, I think, really strategic um, action by the city. And then natural systems. So when we talk about natural systems, we're talking about our parks, the number of trees in the city, also kind of our waters, our streams, and our lakes. So um, right now, Bellevue's tree canopy is at 37%, so that means like if you take like a little aerial satellite photo, you can see tree coverage over 37% of so Bellevue. So when the PSC gets done, we're going to have less. So. <laughs> well, we do have a goal, so you know, what PSC takes away, the city is committed to making sure that we're restoring that. Um, I don't know, also if you saw the news, there was a, I think um, the city was, somebody donated a thousand um, great sequoia trees um, to the city. So those are being planted all over the place. It, it takes a long time for, I mean, this, uh, conifers are being replaced with deciduous trees. I mean, it's, it sounds good, mm -hmm. but it's, it's not really, it's, it's contradictory to Yes, I, <clears throat> I mean, you know, I can't speak to PSC, uh, but I, I know and we are very aware in the city of what a really important issue and how much people really care the about city their is trees. The responsible for allowing, they allow the permits for PSC. I know that's not your department, yeah. but so the city has these laudable mm -hmm. goals, but when the shoe hits the concrete, they don't always give it well, yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm happy. I mean, I think this is what community engagement is about. So I think it's, I'm here to hear your, your concerns. And I'm going to, um, I think there's, you know, as we get into this presentation, I want to make sure that you know other opportunities to share those concerns as well. Okay. Yeah. I found myself driving one of the routes that I normally drive. I mm -hmm. found myself getting really upset when I see the number of more high rise, not relatively high rise, but high density condominiums and things being put up. And then I thought, okay, that that occupies a certain amount of space where trees could be growing. What if they were all single family dwellings like it used to be? Mm -hmm. yeah it would be worse. So there's no free lunch here. There's a, there are trade-offs everywhere you go. Plus that increases, but then that increases the traffic more than a bunch of single family. But yes, I mean, you, I think you're really bringing up an important point around kind of the thoughtful amount of kind of trade-offs people have to consider, right? You know, when you build a multifamily house, 
in the city, it maybe feels like you're losing trees, but if those all had to be single lots and they had to be farther up into the Cascades or farther away, and you know, the longer you push people out of the city, then the longer they have to drive. So maybe we have a little bit more traffic in the city, but it's less emissions overall because somebody doesn't have to drive so far to get into work or things like that. So I think you bring up a really good point about, you know, it's all about kind of thinking through these trade-offs and these plans. <coughs> So some of the stuff that um, within the municipal, so I mentioned that the city itself has goals in the last five years. <coughs> the city itself has um, dropped our own greenhouse gas emissions from our buildings and our fleet um, by 22%. 70% um, of the energy that the city is using to turn on the lights in our building comes from green power. Um, we recycle 66% of our waste at City Hall. I certainly know and see the recycling and composting bins all over City Hall. Um, as I mentioned, we've installed 20 EV charging stations um, and we've planted <coughs> eight, over 8,000 trees in um, parks in just in 2018. So we are planting around 10,000 trees a year. I know there's also that strong balance and the coniferous trees are important because they really absorb more carbon than deciduous trees. So I think that is important to note. Um, so I think we kind of started to talk about this. What are some of the things that you guys are doing either personally around uh, environmental stewardship? Well, we just bought a Prius a few years ago, so we're trying to help with that. Yeah, so you're buying a more efficient vehicle. What else are folks doing? Recycling and making energy conserving houses, you know, lots of insulation. Yeah, yeah, I think that's important. I did that in my own home and added more insulation and did a lot of sealing up. Yeah. Our church in general is very green, both because of the remodel and how it was done, mm -hmm. and the, the uh, uh, utensils that we use in the mm -hmm. kitchen, the plates and the compostable silverware. Great, and that all makes a really so important difference, yeah. The LED lights are all over, Great. and uh, we belong to several environmental groups that give us guidance and that you have to qualify for. We just qualified this week for the another year of Presbyterians for Earth Care, which is a 10-page uh, survey to qualify with us. all the details in your property and your outreach. And well, congratulations. Like that. That's excellent. So, uh, Anything else that folks are doing or? Yeah. Uh, I'm being more conscious about what I buy and how I oh, use yeah. it, you know, um, mm -hmm. I'm really trying not to buy things that that I don't need, A, and also that are in plastic, oh, you know, yeah. thinking yeah. about the thinking. Before. Yeah, I just recently bought myself like a bunch of little reusable sandwich bags, right, uh -huh. for my right. lunch and things right. like that, instead of wrapping them up in things right. that I can throw away. You can buy, buy a local yeah. produce and then where, where you can. But that involves another one of these trade-offs very often, mm -hmm. because if you just run by Safeway, you're going to have more trouble doing that. So you go to Puget Sound Consumer Co-op, mm -hmm. but that's a longer drive. <laughs> yes, yes, I think <clears throat> definitely. Anything else that folks are doing? Well, taking taking bags instead of give, letting them give you plastic bags. Yes, I have my reuse. I'm gonna do a little grocery shopping later today. I've got my reusable bags in the car. I think that's an important part. What was that? I was just saying I gotta start doing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I saw a neat ad on the TV. I get to do it, but they were advertising these little fabric bags instead of when you when you're putting your vegetables in mm -hmm. bags. <clears throat> instead of taking the plastic, you take your own little bags, and then they go in the washing machine. Mm. And I haven't tried it yet, but I'm thinking that I might try to I do. I have a couple them. of those mm. um, when I go and buy like flour or sugar. You can put them, you know, buy it in the bulk. So I like to do that. Yeah, I think this is to put like yeah. broccoli in and you know whatever else that you 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 buy. Yeah, in. I think it's interesting. Somebody um, I was at um, a talk personally around environmental issues earlier this week, and I think. 
um, the example the speaker brought up about all these kind of things that we want to do in our own lives that are around behavior change, and they brought up the example of seat belts, right? And I mean, I, I'm old enough that I remember as a kid jumping in the back seat and not putting on a seat belt, not having a car seat or any of that stuff, right? And now I think we have so ingrained that behavior, like I would feel, I'd feel naked if I didn't put a seat belt on right now. And so I think as people, as you guys are talking about, you know, I think bringing your plastic bag, changing out bags or doing other things, right? I think those little um, behavior changes that even an individual does changes kind of the cultural um, norms and practices. Well. My husband bought me a straw for Christmas. Oh! A glass straw with a, with a little brush that goes in. Uh, I've yet to use it. Actually, I've carried it around. To, I think I took it to Mexico. I don't know where I've taken it, but uh, I've yet yeah, to use it. Present. What? Is that your big present? Yes, my big present. <laughs> well, you know, I heard from a high school student, we were talking to folks, at, to some students at Interlake High School this year, and one of the young um, women there had bought her father a, a reusable straw for Christmas as well, so. I think a number of people in the congregation, and Jan's probably the most vocal, uh, are engaged in public actions that will change the system, not mm. just the plastic bags, but uh, the public utility district, the uh, PSC lines, and I think we need to do more of that, but I, a lot of people, I think, are doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. The, I mean, all many of the high school students that we were speaking to at Interlake were talking about the climate strikes that the young people are going on, so I think, um, uh, I think you also bring up a good point, right, that like there's individual actions that we can take, but we also want to make systemic changes, and that usually requires action. Yes? Yeah, so has the city council um, discussed, or does, I guess, more staff discussed, Matt Bellevue having a ban on single-use plastic bag? You are, you, thank you so much for the segue. Uh, so this is how, this is where we are. So, um, this, we were given direction earlier in the year, one of the council priorities is to review the progress of the previous environmental stewardship plan and analyze additional steps the city may take to achieve its environmental goals. So um, earlier this year, um, we spent a lot of time just kind of reviewing that progress, some of the information I shared. And last fall, um, we did a round of public engagement just to kind of understand what the community's vision was and the kind of goals, how ambitious the community wanted to see Bellevue be around environmental stewardship. And last November, we received <coughs> really kind of official direction from the council to go forth and write this plan and to set bold goals. And so right now, um, we're about to, and really you guys are kind of the first in getting the most detailed preview of assessing those specific strategies and actions. So um, what we've come up with, and I'll probably have some additional slides around this, but we are gonna have a, a long list of potential actions that the city um, could take, and certainly um, single-use plastics, and how, whether or not we would ban them or change policy around them. Um, We'll probably be on that list and up for discussion, right? So we have all these things. And we're gonna be spending the next kind of two and a half months through the end of April really going out and talking to the community <coughs> about the specific actions, hearing from the community about other actions they might want us to consider taking. And then we'll take all of that kind of information and we'll develop it into a draft plan. So we hope, um, or later this summer, that we'll have a draft of that plan. And then again, one more time, <clears throat> we'll go out to the community and share that draft plan and ask for those little, like, you know, did we hit the mark? Do you have a few little tweaks left for us to do? Um, we hope to finalize the plan and have the city council adopt it, um, certainly by the end of 2020. So this is kind of the path that we're on, yes. Will that plan include the permit process of uh, cutting trees? For example, on 148, this is astounding that Bellevue let the power company do that and you feel like you have no power at all and, and the other project too that that's going power project yes going through so definitely meetings and it's kind of like you, 
it's the same. I mean, <laughs> yeah. So um, definitely, we have a goal around tree canopy and discuss. And some of those actions could be around strengthening permitting or changing permitting policy. So those are definitely things that we want to discuss with the community in this next period of time. Let me tell you a little bit about what we have done so far. Um, so um, last fall, what we did is we had an online survey really to kind of understand what people's priorities, vision, and goals were. We did one community workshop at City Hall. Um, we also gathered together folks from the nonprofit community, um, kind of our regional partners in King County Housing Authority, Bellevue College, Bellevue School District, and some of our businesses as well to understand what they are doing. Um, and then we did about six different pop-up tabling events at the library, at various farmers markets, over at Crossroads, by Mini City Hall, um, to really kind of reach as broad um, part of the community. So what we heard in that first phase, right, is that you know 88% <coughs> of folks um, agree or strongly agree that climate change is an important issue personally for them. 77% want Bellevue to be bold or on the leading edge of its approach to dealing with environmental stewardship. Some of the top priorities that we heard in our survey was around water quality in streams and lake, um, recycling and composting, and I think that access to parks and green spaces really capture some of the um, passion and energy people feel around that tree preservation um, as well. And we also asked um, people to really talk about what are the values that drive them to care about this issue. And what we heard from people most is that kind of duty to care for that earth, for the earth, that kind of stewardship or responsibility that we talked about earlier, an obligation to the future. We also heard that in this room this morning. And people really are, you know, um, want the city to be effective and impactful, right? You know, we don't want to just do things that feel good. We want to do things that really honestly make a difference. So let me tell you about what we came up with, our goals, and some of our targets. Uh, and then we can talk about some of the actions as well that we're considering. So the goals of our plan, right, are um, reducing the negative impacts of consumption and waste practices. Um, and we want to be zero waste uh, in the community by 2050. Around uh, mobility and land use, we want to minimize the impacts of transportation and development uh, in Bellevue. We want to focus that development in growth centers and providing all residents with access to a variety of mobility and transportation. So um, we want to reduce the number of people who drive alone, particularly to work, um, to 45%. We'd like to get um, half of Bellevue um, using more efficient electric vehicles. Um, that 50% uh, reduce, v at VMT is the amount of vehicle miles traveled. So, you know, how many, it's like that kind of 10,000 miles I put on my car every year. So you want to reduce the number of miles people are putting on their cars. Um, and then we want to put 85% of jobs and 65% of housing within a quarter mile of frequent transit. So frequent transit generally means um, a bus or a train that's coming at least every 15 minutes or so. Um, so again, that's quarter about giving- Quarter mile? Yeah. So oh gosh. It's a lot um, and then on energy, so we would like to transition the community over to 100% renewable energy um, and see a 30% reduction in energy use overall. So, you know, particularly I think in some of our commercial um, office towers and some of the larger um, multifamily condos and things that are going up. Um, on our natural um, systems, um, as we've seen, we want to increase the total tree canopy coverage to 40%. Um, and we also um, want to set a goal of having 100% of residents in Bellevue within a third of a mile um, to park access. And that's considered actually um, a really kind of best practice. That's a little bit above best practice goals that other cities have. Um, I'm not sure we'll make it in there, but we also um, have really been thinking about a water conservation goal as part of this as well. Um, and I think we've been working with our utilities department because I think um, it's particularly when you're measuring stream health and, and those kinds of things, since that is, you know, 
if somebody you know upstream throws something into a, you know there's a lot that you can't control since our water systems really are regional but I think we may be talking about adding a water conservation goal and we're kind of thinking about like how could you do that how can we measure that um, and then in climate change overall we want to see an 80 percent reduction in greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. Um, and we are going to continue to kind of through this next period refine. I think there's been some discussion about whether to kind of move some of the, the goal year up on some of these. Like, could we get there on some of these goals a little bit faster? Um, so those are also be um, some of the things. So here are some of the actions, and I think we've already talked about it, is that we are considering. And they range from having people and encouraging people to do things more on a voluntary basis or providing incentives to more regulation and requirements. So on the voluntary end, we have just doing more education and outreach and help understanding, helping understand residents understand how they can reduce their waste, use more green energy, protect their own trees, um, providing developers more incentives to create more efficient buildings. Um, we, um, a whole, you know, we continue to have kind of a home energy retrofit program and can help more of our residents kind of turn their own homes into more efficient homes. Is, um, is that in addition to what PSE offers the city has additional? Uh, uh, yes, I believe so. And then um, obviously we see also in here as we move up the thing, um, you know, improving our code requirements. So our permitting around, we have tree preser preservation in there. Um, LID stands for low impact development. So those are buildings, you know, that recycle their water within the building that, you know, are kind of like, I think, zero energy or zero emissions building. Um, LID is what? It stands for low impact development. Why did you pick that? I mean, that's a local improvement district. I, I didn't pick that. So, you know, I just take the acronyms they give me and I try to learn them. They give me like a pop quiz every week. Um, so obviously we can, and then we could go even stronger, right? And have even stronger code requirements around tree preservation. So I think we're really kind of talking and having a lot of conversation in this next few months about how strong we make some of these things, these codes. We could do increased enforcement. Um, we could have more mandatory rules around recycling and composting, um, particularly in some of our commercial buildings or some of our larger multifamily developments. Um, commercial energy benchmarking, this is something I do in Seattle where um, buildings are really required to publicize how much energy they're using. Uh, it can be a kind of strong incentive for making changes and really helps um, people see how much um, energy savings they have over time. And then we could get really um, far into our kind of mandatory, our leading edge things and require more green building rules in our new development. Um, when um, things are being taken down, thinking about how that concrete, how that old rebar is recycled or reused and doesn't just end up in a landfill. Um, and doing more tune-up. So all of these, um, and this isn't even all of them. I mean, we have, I, th I, mean, I think we'll be going out to the public with a number of new actions, existing actions. So these are just some of the things that are on the table. Um, and we're um, happy to be um, talking. So I think this kind of opens us up for another really good opportunity for discussion about ideas or actions that you would like to see the city put on that list. So I've heard definitely something about plastic ba bag bans. Any other things that you would like the city to well, do? Well, so I live in Issaquah where we've had a plastic bag ban for years. And, <laughs> and so, but my question And is, the sky hasn't fallen? And the sky has not fallen. It really hasn't. People still shop and still do all those <laughs> oh. things. I yeah. just, I, and, but they've also had, and I don't know what Bellevue has, do, do you require that, um, um, Fast food, uh, restaurants use um, oh, compostables. compostables. Yeah, that is that is not a requirement at the moment, but that is something I think that we are eager to have a yes. conversation and that's about. That's been we, for years again in yeah. Issaquah, and it, again the sky has not fallen, and there's still sh fast food places making money and all mm -hmm. of those things. So yeah. I, yeah, because it also doing. models for the rest of us when we don't see things in styrofoam, when we don't see things, you start. I think it just changes your mindset of what you know people should be using. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think that's a really great point, and I think that is definitely, I think, going to be part of our discussion in the in the in this next couple months. Yeah. Well, the other thing is, of course, I mean, is charging for bags. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing like having to pay five cents for a bag every time you shop to make you remember to bring your bag from home. I mean, it's a little bit of money, but you you just don't want to pay for that that mm -hmm. that, that sack. And, when, and you know, it's so easy to put throw a few bags in the car and just leave them there. Yeah. So I think that you know, hurt do it where it hurts people in their pocketbooks. Mm -hmm. Then they'll they'll think. But the other, the main thing I wanted to ask you about is. You know the the work on Bellevue Way, mm -hmm. and that that large uh, park and ride is mm -hmm. now gone, and mm -hmm. so that's forcing all those people to to drive to mm -hmm. Seattle. So but here we are on the one hand, putting in light rail, but we are forcing people more people onto the roads because there isn't enough room on the uh, Eastgate park and ride for people. Mm -hmm. And so how is how does it work to put all this stuff in and not put a parking lot around it. Uh, similarly down Rainier, you know, although that is in Bellevue, but um, they put in the the, uh, the light rail and yes, they do build those apartment buildings all along the side mm -hmm. of the light rail, which is great for new people, mm -hmm. but for the existing, for we existing uh, residents, we are going to have to drive to Seattle or we, because we can't even drive to the, bar, to the light mm -hmm. rail because there's nowhere to park. Yeah. So how are you going to work around that? Um, I don't have an answer for you on that. Um, it is a good question, and I know that um, that I think kind of the the formal way people talk about it that is that last mile, first mile, right? So it's one thing to build light rail, but you have to have a way for people to get there, right? And so, um, you know, I think that is um, part of that kind of larger goal about how do we bring um, more bus service? Are there other ways to increase mobility options so people don't even have to feel like they have to drive to um, light rail or park? So I don't particularly have an answer for you on that, but I do think that is an important part of the discussion. Um, Did and I see something about some little vehicle? That, that's electric, that's, that, that, that's planned to, to run around the neighborhood. Oh, the, the, the autonomous. What is that I, um, yeah. I do, again, I mean, that I think is like, this is that kind of part of the discussion where everything is on the table. I mean, I think we're, you know, obviously many years away from just, you know, autonomous vehicles along the streets of Bellevue. But I think that is part of that kind of trying to be bold and innovative in putting those ideas on the table. I mean, you know, I think about the things that, you know, even 10 years ago, I don't think I relied on my smartphone the way I do right now. I would have, I would have written out my directions on a piece of paper to get here this morning as opposed to using my smartphone. So I think that there is um, a lot of those kind of ideas that could come forward. Any, I thought I, yes, ideas that you want the city to come Yeah, I was, I'm, I'm all in favor of mm -hmm. the, the measures you've got up there, you've taken the like low impact development and mm -hmm. all those things. However, there's another, an interrelated issue with all of this, not just those, me those kind of measures, regulations and things, is affordable, affordability of housing. Yes. I don't remember the exact number, but an enormous percentage, a big percentage of people who work on the east side and the cities on, on the east side can't afford to live within 40 miles of their workplace. I think it's 85. It's, it's 80 or 85, I want to say. It's a big number. Yeah. Now, those of us in this room are lucky. We've probably got our houses and things paid for. Mm -hmm. So our only impact is increasing property taxes. Yeah. But. And that's pretty considerable. Yeah. I have to say, that's another issue. <laughs> so I guess I'm saying these things are interrelated and people, the groups that are working on the affordable housing issue yeah. need to talk to, pe to people of yeah, this yes. Group. Well, luckily to... I get to do that because my role, I am in the planning division, and uh, my colleague who just sits a couple cubes away, Janet Lewine, is our affordable housing um, planner. And so, you know, I think um, we, the city is incredibly aware of the need for affordable housing, and um, I think we've been, um, you know, fortunate to have 
Uh, Olympia makes some changes in, in rules about how we use the sales taxes that we collect in the city and what we can spend on affordable housing. And so, um, you know, I think we're making progress, perhaps not enough for some people. Oh. Um, but, you know, I think it's a continual thing. And I do think you bring a really good point around that kind of interconnectedness of those issues. And I think sometimes people think, well, affordable housing is built cheaply. And, and it's like getting everybody's mind around, you have to think of the life system and the holistic system of what you're building. So if you build a not well insulated house or, <laughs> you, you know, and, mm. um, the, the life cycle costs of the house and whoever's paying for the utilities and stuff, um, and you, know, you don't install low flow, good quality low flow toilets, all those things are perhaps ways to reduce immediate building costs, but in the long run, it's pound, what is it, penny wise and pound foolish. Yes, you yeah. save money over time. And I think, you know, that's certainly one of the reasons why we um, have asked, like, the King County Housing Authority, folks who are managing and uh, building affordable, one of the folks, right, who are building and managing affordable housing to be part of that, um, this discussion. And um, our partners in ARCH, right, who's the affordable housing, are also part of these discussions as well. So I think, um, you know, uh, in terms of that, uh, before we go on, because I know folks are leaving for um, practice, in case people want to get updates on the environmental stewardship plan and so particularly some of the events and opportunities and surveys, I'm just going to pass around the sign up sheet, um, just, you know, your name, neighborhood, email, and that way, because we have about three different kind of events that are going to be happening um, in the public, we'll be doing a lot of online stuff, so I want to make sure folks here know about that. So I'll just pass this around where people have to leave for uh, choir practice. Um, any other ideas or actions that you want to see the city? Just a question on the solar assistance um, mm -hmm. that you say Bellevue has been offering. Mm -hmm. Is that still ongoing? Uh, I believe so. I will look into that. And also, you know, when I send out the slides, I'll try to make sure to get some more of the links to specific things, and I'll, and I'll find out some more information on the solar assistance. Um, well, I'm just curious about the uh, the influx of Amazon. Is mm -hmm. what is Bellevue doing to uh, deal with the impact of them, and is Amazon being held accountable for their impact on this area? Yeah, so I'm I'm not party to those discussions, so I don't know the um, ins and outs and details. But the city really is trying to have ongoing conversations with um, Amazon about those impacts, particularly, I mean, number one, right, they're going to be building office towers, and so there's an opportunity to make sure that those buildings are really energy efficient. Um, I think, you know, obviously the other big conversation is going to be around the transportation impacts and traffic impacts, right? And so, um, you know, thinking about, um, you know, where those office towers are, um, you know, Obviously, some of those folks who are going to be working for Amazon are going to want to live close to Amazon. So I think um, I can't speak to the details about them, but I can't assure you that the city isn't just like, hey, well, here's the welcome mat. Do whatever you want, right? You know, there is really, um, I think, very thoughtful discussions happening um, between the city and um, Amazon. I see them walking through the halls um, uh, there to talk with me. So. Quick question on yeah. your survey. What do you mean by can we use your photo? Oh, you don't have to. Um, uh, we have that on there sometimes at our public events. Uh, we take yes. photos, and if people oh, don't I want see. us to put their photo online or something. But I'm not taking photos at this yeah. event, so oh. it's, not, uh, it's not relevant. So you can ignore that column. Um, yes? Well, you probably don't know this also, but um, it, when you talk about tree canopy, I have a my daughter works for a nearby city, and she's the tree planner person. Oh. In this. And so, and they've been really encouraging their people in their city to plant non-native trees, trees that are native to Oregon and Northern California because of climate change. And I was wondering if Bellevue is starting to get on that bandwagon as well. That's a really good question. We, we have had some internal staff workshops to kind of talk about you know, what's feasible with um, our various departments. And I know since I was at the table that was talking about trees, and um, yes, yeah, so I can say that like, you know, that our parks department, our people who are really managing the trees are thinking about like, just, well, that's about resilience. Whether it's 
filtering out. Oh, through, in terms of it. in terms of education to folks. Up. That's mm -hmm. I, you know I think that would be another really important thing to share with us about that because I think you're addressing something that we would call like adaptation and resiliency, right? You know we have to think you know unfortunately right you know climate change is here right now and in order to um, thank you, thank you. Um, in order to um, address that right you know we might need to plant different kinds of species who are more resilient to the way our climate is changing in the Pacific Northwest speaking of trees yes is it possible to register specific trees we have a um, cedar tree that is about 10 percent ours and nine percent our neighbors oh. that is at least 250 years old oh, fantastic wow. tree and i worry that when we're gone and they decide to tear down our house to build another one because that's what's happening in our neighborhood that they will cut that tree down too and i would is there is there a way to register specific old growth amazing trees. I mean, I get tours mm -hmm. of this tree. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know for certain. I mean, I know, so I live in Seattle, and Seattle has a heritage tree program where um, you can register trees. Um, and um, so I, I, that's another thing well, I, I'll certainly ask when I get back to the office on Monday and see if I can get back to you. And I should also connect you, so we have um, an AmeriCorps staffer, Pauline, who is doing work around tree tours and developing tree ambassador program for the city as well, for people to kind of really learn more about the exceptional trees we have in the city and kind of, I think, create that kind of sense of- I have of, never seen one in Bellevue like it. Oh, it wow. It's really, but I can't have too many people peering over our neighbor's fence. <laughs> Yes. Related to non-native trees, mm -hmm. a long time ago, maybe probably at least 20 years ago, I was hiking back up in the forest, and, and I had been noticing in our yard, we're, sur we're surrounded, we've got big Douglas firs in our back mm -hmm. and down, the, down, the, down to the stream. Seemed to me they were dropping way more needles and pine cones and had been for a few mm -hmm. years. So I came up and I noticed that out in, out in the mountains too. I came across Forest Service, a couple of Forest Service Rangers, and I mentioned it to them. And they both, one, one of them had been, in fact, they were out there looking to see. He said, Yep, yeah, we're checking on it. Something has changed with the Douglas firs. And what we think is going on is the climate is changing, mm -hmm. and they're not comfortable here anymore. So they're trying to they're dropping more cones and things to reproduce. Mm -hmm. Oh, and and that's been going on ever since. Uh, something's changing. And yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think you know, I think everybody's bringing up that kind of notion that we that we see, you know, climate change is here now. Things are happening now, um, and I think that really just adds, I think, to the importance and sense of urgency around the work that the city is doing. So in our last few minutes, um, and this is most of my slideshow, so I'm happy to keep um, talking about ideas folks have or an answering questions. Um, I will let you know about some of the public engagement events. So as I said, in these next couple of months through the end of April, we really want to hear from as many people as possible around the kinds of actions we're considering. Do you support them? Do you not support them? Do you have questions or concerns about them? Do you have other ideas that you're not seeing that you would like to see? So the way we're gonna go about doing that is um, in early March, we're gonna be launching an online survey. So that's like the easiest way for somebody to provide feedback on the kind of actions. We also online have a really great tool um, called Engaging Bellevue, and that's a place where people can ask questions. So if you get home and you realize, oh, I really wanted to ask Brooke this question, um, uh, again, I'll send out my email to folks, but 
You can also post a question online and I'm the person who will get that question so I can look at your questions there. We have a nice little space where people can suggest ideas like would you consider this? Would you can add, consider adding this into the plan? So that's another way. We're also going to be doing three more public events and each one is going to have a different sort of flavor. So in the evening of Tuesday, March 3rd, we're going to be at Interlake High School just in their commons and cafeteria area. And we're going to be doing an open house and so we'll have lots of boards sharing some of our newest ideas that we're considering in the plan and it'll be an opportunity again for people to ask questions to kind of give us a little indication of which actions they're most excited about and then we'll also be having some smaller table discussions about the different focus areas so that's one event um, at the end of March, we're going to be doing sort of a family environmental stewardship fair over at Mercer Slough Environmental Education Center. So again, it'll be an opportunity for people both to learn about the plan and then we're going to be partnering with a number of other different departments in the city. So again, people can learn more about what can I do to recycle more, or compost more, or protect the, the stream that runs through the back of my property. Um, so you'll have a lot of opportunity. Um, we're going to do some little walks with the rangers, so it'll be a little fun, very family-friendly event. And then I'm very excited. At the, towards the end of April, we're partnering with Bellevue College during Earth Week. And um, we're going to be doing, again, uh, a public forum and discussion, and we'll have a guest speaker from UW Bothell. Her name is Dr. Jennifer Atkinson, and she does a lot of writing on emotional resilience in the face of climate change. So how people are responding when they see the news and it feels very overwhelming about wildfires in Australia or, you know, orcas in our sound. And so she's going to be really leading a discussion about the ways people can kind of channel that concern and those emotional feelings into action. And so um, it's going to be during the day at Bellevue College. It's going to, all these events are going to be free and um, open to the public. So um, again, in my follow-up, I'll send, you know, plenty of links if people want to register. Um, and if you haven't signed up, um, do. And I will make sure that you get updates um, around the plan and these and invitations to these events. So if you haven't, if you want to get updates or information, definitely put your email on there. We've got like five more minutes. I'm happy to take some more questions. I also did bring um, a couple of our flyers that just go into, just kind of explain a little bit of the plan so if anybody wants this. And again, as I said, I'll, I'll send an email with um, this presentation and as much other information as I can. Any other questions or comments? Yeah, John. I have a question about the picture. <laughs> Can you explain that to me? <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, this is a program that I think happened before I started. And these were our solar heroes. And this was taken um, at an installation at one of the city of Bellevue's facilities. I don't remember if it was the Bellevue Service Center or one of our community centers. I think it was just like a fun way to promote that what the city was doing around its own buildings and installing solar on its own buildings. Will the survey be going to places like churches and other businesses, you know? Yes, yeah, so um, I will definitely, you know, send um, a link to the survey to Laura okay. to pass around to the churches. And I've been meeting with other faith communities as well here in Bellevue. I think so, own property. <laughs> Obviously. Yes, obviously <laughs> on property. Um, we um, are certainly going to be, also we have um, been talking with the Bellevue Downtown Association to, so they can help promote our survey in that community and through the Bellevue Chamber of Commerce. So it's important, right, you know, we want to hear um, we, we want to hear not just from the people like you in this room who are clearly, you know, willing to get up really early on a Sunday morning, um, extra early to have this conversation, but we want to have this conversation with people who maybe are less aware of the issue as well, right? Or, you know, so it's important in this community engagement to hear from as wide uh, a variety of folks as possible. So um, definitely, um, you know, we're going to be putting it on the city's social media. It will be up on the city's sort of next door and Facebook and Twitter as we try to reach other people and 
you know, we have a, a variety of different kind of lists where people have signed up to say, I want to get news from the city of Bellevue about this issue or that issue. So we'll make sure those folks know about it as well. But if you have ideas, I mean, of other folks or ways that we should get this information out about how to participate, I would love to hear them.